So we got a couple more things coming out from Tesla that are interesting to talk about. One that actually uh, may apply to Tim. I don't know. Um, Tesla just launched track <laughs> mode V2. Actually, I don't think he bought the... There was that whole debacle with like, if you paid for full self-driving but didn't get the track package or this or that, like you didn't get all yeah. the things or whatever. It's kind of a confusion. But now um, Tesla has launched a $5,500. It's $5,500 for those metric folks. Uh, a Model 3 track package with new wheels and brakes and more importantly, better controls over the car. So you see these new wheels here. They look kind of like the Roadster wheel. Mm. Kind of like the brand new, uh, the coming uh, upcoming uh, uh, Tesla Roadster wheel. It's a uh, a five double spoke kind of a thing. So there's like five spokes, but they're doubles. Um, kind of spider web looking. Uh, they got some new brake pads, some new tires, some new things, all the stuff. Uh, they got these. Okay, so the full list of everything you get is a uh, four 20 inch, uh, 20 inch by nine inch zero G performance wheels. Uh, it has the logo caps, the lug nut covers, yada, yada. The Michelin Pilot Sport Cup 2 tires, as I mentioned earlier, best tires you can buy, according to the people I know. <laughs> uh, some tire pressure sensors, uh, front and rear high-performance brake pads, and then this track-focused brake fluid. Okay? That thing? Okay. <laughs> uh, and they uh, they invited some, uh, some, some lovely YouTubers out to go test this. Uh, on a racetrack and on a brand new car, and uh, it's and they're pretty... all doing the same. Were they under contract to make that that Jesus stance there? Like, <laughs> <laughs> this is just okay. Well, uh, oh, what's this guy's name? The Everything Apple Pro guy is not. He's got the arms folded, but yeah. uh, Salamandrin here. I don't know this girl's name. Um, anyways, yeah. So some uh, some kind of like I don't know what. Yeah, some some YouTubers will say couple <laughs> couple car people, couple tech people. I wasn't one of them. I don't even care. I think it's awesome that they <laughs> that they invited people. I, I don't know. I would love to do it, of course, but I'm not really like a car guy doing these things. Yeah. So anyways, it's not, not my bag, um, but super cool. And in the videos, they, they uh, have some some clips here. Oh, probably the one that I would recommend watching and, you know, not to diss anyone else there, but I really like Parker at Vehicle Versions. Um, and so he got to go there as well. I don't know why Electric didn't include him in this article. But in it, uh, you can control... Uh, kind of really fine tuning that track mode settings in this new version. Uh, so the concepts are oversteer, understeer. Uh, here you have ability, or you have controls for handling. Uh, it's just called handling balance, stability assist, regen braking. Um, you know, compressor overclock. You can record a video. You can even like adjust which tires have which amount of traction and everything. Like it's insane what you can do now, and. I think this the overall message I get here is it just speaks to Tesla's advantage considering the car is so software driven. Yeah. Um you one just of the tweak so many things. Yeah, you can literally control everything. It's it's incredible. And so uh from uh Parker's video I saw, he was saying, you know, it feels like a like a 2000 horsepower like supercar. Uh it, but it's, you know, a Tesla Model 3. So <laughs> Pretty cool stuff, and if you guys have this, uh, or if you have a Model Three performance, uh, you should be able to. I don't know. Can you buy it already? Let's go see the Tesla shop. What if it's on there or not? Yeah, it may be coming out soon. It might not be something, or I bet you it's one of those things where it shows up in the upgrades in the app. So on the mm -hmm. app, there's that upgrade section now. I bet mm -hmm. you if you have a Model Three performance, but you probably have to have the uh, you probably have to have the um, the performance package as well, not just the performance model, right? So you get like the bigger rotors and the, the di into different brakes. Like it's lowered. It has the the uh, little yeah. spoiler thing. It kind of has some more accents and stuff like that. So yeah, cool. You gonna so you gonna buy it? Probably not. <laughs> you know what? I really would love to actually take like a performance model three on a track and just kind of have that experience. Cause I've, I've never really been a car guy either. And I've certainly never been like a performance car track kind of guy, but it just seems like it'd be a fun thing to do. Yeah. I'll tell you driving that Porsche Taycan, which is the most insane track kind of car I've ever driven. Mm -hmm. It blew my mind. I had a blast just driving on the freeways. Um, and then driving through the mountains a little bit. It was like, it was nuts, man. Cool. 
Um, <clears throat> but it's definitely not for the faint of heart. Like it's an intense experience. <laughs> it's not just like, <laughs> you know, it's not, it's not like that calm Zen happiness. It's more um, like the, um, I just played sports and won the championship happiness. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to go to Disney world. That's right. That's right. Uh, speaking of Disney world, um, I don't know. Why. Sure. <laughs> Entertainment. <laughs> Entertainment. Um, is a, this is huge, but it's such a niche, tiny topic that I don't think it's going to get any coverage. Tesla is now offering an infotainment upgrade for Model S and Model X. So that big, beautiful 17-inch portrait mode screen in the middle uh, for the S and X uh, does not have – I'm sorry, the older ones, they have what's known as MCU1. Mm-hmm. Now, MCU1 is missing a ton of features such as the ability to do Netflix, um, even things like uh, Sentry Mode, I believe it doesn't have, and some of these other more advanced features, some of the newer ones, uh, you know, Spotify, all that kind of stuff. Um, actually, no, I think Spotify's there. But point being, um, y- you know, there was this, this issue of like, well, it sucks that I have this, uh, this you know, $100,000 car that's two years old, and it's a dog now when it comes to the, how the computer works. Well, you can now upgrade that to the MCU2 for $2,500. And this is right in line with what Elon had said. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of weird. It removes uh, AM, FM radio and Sirius XM. I don't know why. Uh, So apparently those are are not available if you do this upgrade. Yeah, I don't have Sirius XM in my car. Oh, do you not? I don't know. I don't think so. Oh, okay. Uh, I know they removed AM radio a while ago, which really frustrated me. Um, not that I listen to AM radio a lot, but <laughs> there's that funny um, trick you can do where you uh, tune your an AM radio all the way down to like 500 or the lowest setting, and the radio picks up the uh, electromagnetic frequency from the motor. Oh. And, and it makes it sound like a Ferrari or something. Oh, cool. So you're you're driving around, and it's like, wow, wow, wow. Just for you that know, trick alone, it's worth it's worth having. Totally, yeah. It's awesome. It's definitely one of the coolest things. Can you pull that up again, what you just had up on your screen? Yeah. Because um, I wanted to ask about the, the okay, the, the screen on that uh, Model S there. That's uh-huh. like the old school operating system, isn't it? Yeah, this is some fake nonsense. They just did that. Uh, oh, okay. This, this is a Model X. And oh, yeah, you can see where it's cropped in right there with the Netflix logo. So so yeah. the, the old Model S's don't still have that that design, no. right? Okay. No, I didn't no, think it so. Looks, yeah, I remember when I, even when X. I got my car in 2016, I was like, God, these icons are just like ugly and 90s <laughs> yeah. looking. Like, what is going on? Because at the time, like, to flat say, icons... Like, the very first time I ever got into a Model S, and it was one of the earlier ones I was able to get in one just to check it out, I was not a fan of the the OS. I, I thought it was really ugly looking and old. Yeah. It looked like looked yeah. like Netscape or something. Right. And right. Anyway, it's it's much cleaner now. I like it now. It's good. But as a former Mozillian, I take offense to that. But okay. <laughs> well, but I I saw that on the screen. I was like, whoa, what are those? Are they still working on that old software? No, That's crazy. No, 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 no. It's it's all updated now. Okay, well, good. But that so I, I have to say that uh, the, the only thing odd about this, besides the removing of AM, FM, and Sirius radio, which I think some people will be upset about, because Sirius is like a good thing that a lot of people yeah, like. Yeah, my wife has uh, it and is. Yeah, I mean, I know people, if you road trip a lot, like people swear by it. Mm -hmm. Uh, So anyways, and then you see all the hardcore fans, uh, uh, hardcore Tesla fans being like, yeah, AM, FM radio is stupid anyways. Who wants that? Like you ever be in an emergency situation when the internet's down? The (laughs) radio is actually a very useful thing, okay? Yeah. (laughs) Anyways. I never um, listened to radio, but that doesn't mean it shouldn't exist, you know? See, it's interesting. I do a lot because, uh, well... Just streaming sometimes sucks and it doesn't work, mm. you know, and it, it trips up. And so I, I hit like NPR news on the way to take my, on the way into the office sure. or taking my son to school all the time, you know. Yeah. Um, it's nice, like, it's almost like regular broadcast TV where, you know, it, when you've, when you, like, you're, I, I have this whole theory, like, you have a certain number of decisions that you make before your, your decision power just, you're like i guess it's willpower it's like an exhaustible resource it's a decision fatigue yeah right you get to the point where you're like i don't care 
Yeah. Just <laughs> give me whatever. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so radio and broadcast TV remove the need to make that decision. Yeah. You know, in some extent. So I don't have to think, oh, which podcast should I listen to? Oh, let me go look. Oh, I have 500 things I could choose. Yeah. No, like just, just click, boom. Okay, something is on. It's actually really, it's funny that you say that because like um, it's very rare that I just watch TV anymore and I cut the cords. So I use uh, YouTube TV now for any which kind of- Which is fantastic. It's actually pretty I great. I love yeah. YouTube TV. Yeah. Um, it's got like a million sports channels, which I don't really follow sports. So it's kind of wasted on me, but- um, like recently I actually had an evening where I wasn't slammed cause I need to work on productivity clearly. But, um, I got on YouTube TV and just started like scrolling through channels like, yeah. like we used to do. And it was kind of like, like oh, what's that? Yeah, yeah. And I just kind of stumbled on things that I wouldn't have normally found. There, there's something a lot more calming and relaxing about that than like, you know, scrolling through Netflix for an hour to try to find something to watch for 20 minutes while yeah. I'm having lunch or something, you know? Um, well, what we end up doing is watching trailers all night for yeah. movies, and then we end, never end up watching the movie. We right. get too tired, and we just go to bed. We say, forget it. Yeah. Whereas if you were just scrolling through TV, you would just find something. And, and it was just it. on, yeah. yeah. You know, and from a technical standpoint, I uh, I would love to talk to like an, a network engineer that really understands this deeper that, than I do. But streaming, uh, YouTube TV somehow is does it incredibly well, uh, where the quality is just always great. Um but like Netflix, for example, it, it has a whole algorithm about like, let's start streaming in like a really low resolution that looks like crap and then, you know, get it better after a few seconds. So it like kind of clears up and all this. Mm -hmm. the, the streaming is, is very hard. And broadcast over radio waves is actually a beautiful technology when you think about it, because instead of having a massive central place that has all this power to beam to 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 send out that signal direct to all the consumers and the more people on it the bigger and beefier this centralized infrastructure has to be it's the exact opposite it's a distributed one mm -hmm. we have a radio tower that just broadcasts this thing a million miles and there could be five or 500 million people on the other end listening and it doesn't change at all what the technical requirements of that signal right, being sent out yeah. other than the distance itself, which, you know, that's just physics. That's just a thing you have to deal with. Yeah. So I actually think that there's a lot of merit to those technologies. Um, in fact, I even installed at our house uh, an HD antenna, TV antenna mm -hmm. a while ago because you can buy them for like 60 or 70 bucks and just mount it on the roof, yeah. run it down. And now we had like 35 because we didn't we cut the cord, you know, 15 years ago. So we haven't had anything. Um and yeah, like we had, you know, uh, KPBS, which is like the local PBS station here, kids ch programs, things that my son would never watch. But once they come on, he's like, oh, this is great. Right. So, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, just because something's new and shiny doesn't mean it's inherently better, I guess. There is merit to things like AM, FM radio and, yeah. you know, broadcast TV. It doesn't mean that the older uh, model doesn't still serve a function. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Long rant there about... <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. It's interesting, though, you know, just how, how we go through and how people are very quick to dismiss something just because it's not the new thing without considering the value of, of what it is. You know, like I think analog stuff, like have you ever listened to um, uh, like a, a, a tube amplifier and speaker system, like a very analog but mm. high-end speaker system? Man, it's incredible. Yeah. It's it's it blows away your digital stuff like in, in in every regard. Now, granted, a good system like that is like fifteen thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's not I was about for to say everyone. They're, they're like custom made. Yeah, but it's pretty cool. You know, I like that. Uh, and I, anyways, I, I like the idea of of not just throwing out something because it's old. Sure. Because I'm getting old, and I don't want to get thrown out. <laughs> Um, if I can find it, I was going to pull it up really quick. Of course, it's not going to show it to me now. There, there's a, a new thing that I've just completely fallen in love with on YouTube. It's, it's just become my new favorite thing. Um, there's this one specific channel called My Analog Journal. And, mm. and it's basically a guy. Let me see if I can pull it up. Uh, it's basically a guy just doing a DJ set in his home. And, uh, and it's, he, he's from Insta, Istan, hello, Istanbul. And, um, is that Constantinople? Once was. 
Anyway, um, <laughs> but old reference there. I'll pull it up here. <laughs> but he basically uh, he just he, he has two turntables and a microphone, and uh, <laughs> and he just plays music, and it's all like this one's like rare Japanese records. Obviously, you can't hear it right now, but um, he just has some some cool stuff that he finds. Yeah, is it playing? Yeah, it's playing. He's just standing there. But anyway, that that's all it is right here. And every once in a while, he'll like cut to another shot of him. That's so cool. And yeah, uh, I've got a uh, I've got a friend here in San Diego that's doing a thing uh, like this. His name's Hebron, or we just call him G. Um, <laughs> where he he went to Japan recently, and they had these uh, these uh, what are they called? Uh, long play cafes. I think it's called, mm. and and so what it is is uh you know it did there's various ways to do it but uh, imagine like a little coffee shop where they have a DJ playing an album, but yeah. the DJ isn't there like scratching or doing anything like that, right. and he's playing the entire album, so like they'll have a Miles Davis you know bitches brew uh-huh. and they'll play the entire three and a half hours <laughs> or whatever it is, and. And the idea is you sit there and you have your coffee or your whatever and you enjoy mm-hmm. like music in its fullness and, and their whole setup that they do. They ha- Right now it's like a little pop-up shop. Their whole setup is all analog like this. You know, it's a record and yeah. uh, tube amplifiers and those kind of things. It's it's just, it's like you have your own DJ in your home just mm-hmm. playing really weird, interesting music that you never would have found yourself and and there's something about the way he cares for the the records. He like gets out this little, I don't know if you can see my arrow over Cloth here, but the, this little yeah, he gets out this little uh, microfiber thing and he like cleans the record and like the care that's taken in. It's just so like it's such a throwback to now. It's just like Spotify playlists or whatever. Yeah, I mean it's this guy who's like really like caring about what he's doing and he's like tweaking the knobs and just kind of like watching him do what he does. It's I don't know, it's it's engrossing. Yeah. It's interesting. For for our off grid property, we're we're gonna have stuff like that where it's all uh like there'll be electricity, but for music we're gonna have records uh, and a record player. And you're just gonna have to choose one and put it on. Yeah. You know? Like that uh did you stay at the hotel with us for Cybertruck? Yeah. And, and they had a record player. They did have the record players there, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I, I, I like the concept of uh of of being a little analog and in, in, in you know the the a nice idea is like it forces you into doing it or like experience experiencing some form of media in maybe a way that you wouldn't mm-hmm. decide to yourself right when you just put a record on it like the song's over you're not going to go change it it's like a pain in the butt to deal with all that yeah. so you let it play and now you know, you're you're being pushed and nudged in, in different areas. And I think that it's growth is what it comes down to, you know. Yeah. And I think that it's just experiencing music in a in a different way than we do. And like it's just kind of on in the background for, for most mm-hmm. of us nowadays. But like once upon a time you would put on a record, throw some headphones on, lay back in bed and just listen Sit to it. Sit there and listen. Yeah. yeah. Like music nowadays, it's it's weird. Like I don't understand <laughs> We sound like, like old men right now. <laughs> I don't get to music these days. These little kids. Well, it's really curious. Like, like music is such a, a an interesting, amazing thing because there's so many different ways to appreciate it, mm-hmm. in all that. But I I do not find myself hardly at all knowing like the name of a song, right. or lyrics, or things. Like I just hear a thing. I'm like, oh yeah, I like that song. Who yeah. is it? I don't even know who it is. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, whereas, yeah, I mean, I could remember when, uh, when Nevermind came out going to, uh, to, uh, uh, what was it called? Zia Records in Phoenix and, uh, not buying a record, but buying a CD. Mm -hmm. And like, I had my portable thing and literally just like, like being on my skateboard, had some like nacho cheese Doritos sitting there just like listening to that for hours. Uh You know what I mean? It's like, it's just this different experience. And and I, I wish... Uh, younger generations, I guess, would uh, would appreciate those things, or you know, find a way to do that. I'm not. I'm not trying to say that they don't, or that they don't enjoy music in their own way, and that it's not meaningful to them in, in a different way. But um, it's just a different way of experiencing it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, cool. I think. Well, I think we're ex- we've exhausted our old man. Everyone's rant. gone now. Yep. <laughs> no. well, <laughs>
Hey, thanks for checking us out, guys. I hope you enjoyed this clip from our podcast. We do a weekly show here on YouTube, so make sure and subscribe to Our Ludicrous Future, where we discuss all the things that are going to make our future totally ludicrous. You can join us here on YouTube or at any of your favorite podcast places. Plus, if you want to get some behind-the-scenes stuff and join a cool community, you can help support the channel at patreon.com. Thanks a lot. Thanks, guys.